It happened in 1988 when I was 12 years old and the head of the rebel commander came and started recruiting children to serve as child soldiers. And 15 of us were forced to go and fight in the war. Julius Achon had no choice but to enter a world of violence and chaos as a soldier of Uganda's Lord's Resistance Army. It's very difficult when you're a young kid. You really don't know what, what you're thinking at that moment. When the gun or the, the plane is shooting, following you, each and every time you just run for your lives. And I remember, I didn't know how to pray, but when the plane shoot the bombs, I would call the name of the God. I said, God help me, you know. That day, Julius managed to escape along with many of the child soldiers. He was among the few to make it out alive. Later on when I escaped and I looked back, I knew God was with me because out of 15 of us, then six of us survived, were not killed. And then out of 15, I'm the only one who survived and made it into running. And what helped me when I had, if you become a good runner, you get a free scholarship or even you make it to the United States. When I ran home in the evening, I told my mom and my dad, I said, tomorrow I'm gonna run to town, which is about 42 miles. And they thought I was joking. The following morning, I ran 42 miles. And I made it to town because I really wanted to represent my district and also to make it at the level which I would get a free scholarship. Julius went on to win that race and was awarded a full scholarship to study abroad. He set the NCAA record for 800 meters and would later compete in the Olympics representing his country, Uganda, in the 1996 and 2000 Games. Sports has made my life, my family, and my community change. Both Olympics I was given to be the Uganda team captain and flag bearer. I would see such a moment, everything just would change with a big population during opening ceremony and seeing myself on a big TV screen. Then from that time, I just knew like, I just want to do better. Julius experienced many highs through running, but also experienced several lows. In 2004, after a trip home from Uganda, tragedy struck. When I came back to Portland, Oregon, then later on I had my mother was shot. She had bullets, needed some money to take her to the hospital. But unfortunately, I didn't have money and she bled to death after four days. And then from that time, my mind started reading if I should build a medical clinic because when I left the village, there was never been a hospital. So I feel if there was a hospital, maybe my mother could have not died. Although heartbroken, Julius would use that tragedy to give back to his community and build a hospital there in his mother's honor. He also started the Julius H. Hahn Foundation, where he houses, feeds, and educates orphans in Uganda. And I see the more I do good things to people, the more people love me, and it has gotten bigger and bigger. And I see the hospital alone now is treating about 700 patients in a month. Julius hopes his foundation will help his country build a brighter future yet remains humble to know that God can use someone like him to make a difference. Each and every time I then ask myself why with the population of Northern Uganda, I'm the only one chosen and I'm in United States, like in my community. And then sometime when I read the Bible, book of Philippians 1, 6, which he said, he will begin a good work in you. 
will be faithful to complete it till the days of Jesus Christ. And never always, I don't want to give up. And never giving up became as a song like, never give up, never give up, keep doing good things, keep working hard. Struggling has a purpose, has a destiny or somewhere to go. You should not see that you don't have the parents, you don't have the family, but God is the number one family in your life. And I would encourage everybody or a kid watching from Africa should never give up in their life.